Hi, it's Emma Kenny, Channel Mum Psychologist in Residence and a very warm welcome to day three of our course. I want to pass on a little nugget of information to you today. There is no such thing as a perfect mum. These, let me tell you this, they're a myth. They're in the heads of advertising people. They are not real. Let's talk about the perfect mums that you see when you look at your social apps on your phone every day. This, it's got a lot to answer for in how us mums feel. Remember, most of the mums that you're connected to via your phone show the best of their day. They're rarely showing you the honest side of family life, so it is time to stop comparing because it's going to make you feel better, I promise. It is so cathartic to have a social media call from time to time. If you're following someone that makes you feel bad about yourself when you look at her profile, just unfollow, unfriend, or just hide the posts because they're not going to know that you've done that. Your scrolling experience, I promise you, will improve and you're going to feel better about your day. Do it as soon as you've stopped watching this video. There's a mum mantra that I want you to remember when you're having a bad day and feel like everything's getting on top of you. It's simply this. My best is absolutely good enough. There's no such thing as a perfect mum and I am a good enough mum. Say it with me now. Go on. My best is absolutely good enough. There's no such thing as a perfect mum and I am a good enough mum. If you kept the kids alive, safe and warm each day, then that's good enough mama and you are doing your absolute best and for that, I salute you. So let's talk about the recipe for having a really good day. Whilst it is tempting to grab a quick fix when being a mum gets tough and our day hasn't gone well, it's like papering over the cracks. It's not going to help you in the long run. I'm talking about those moments where you're reaching for the rest of the pack of chocolate biscuits, another glass of wine or gin in the evening, cigarettes or caffeine fixes. Yep, they're going to give you a temporary high, you'll feel good, you might feel more in control, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with a chocolate biscuit or a glass of wine but when you're using them to get through, it is really not great. Here's my recipe for a good day. Try to fit as many of these as possible into your day. When you wake up in the morning and before you get out of bed, take three deep breaths and say to yourself, today is gonna be a good day. If your day starts to slide and you get frustrated, just stop for a moment and take three deep breaths and remind yourself of your promise that day. Today, is going to be a good day. Whatever the weather is doing, get out of the house and into the fresh air and feel the sun or wind or rain on your face every single day. Whether it's simply a stroll in your garden, a walk to your local park or a trip to the shops. If you're working, just get off the bus a stop early or make sure that you park the car a little bit further away from your office. Listen to the sounds of nature when you're outside. Did you know that the foods you choose to put in your body affect your mood and mental health? Anxiety and depression can cause comfort eating or can make us lose our appetite altogether. So it's really important that we stop that cycle. A healthy breakfast is so important to start the day in a positive way. Salmon, leafy greens and blueberries have all been shown to be really good mood boosters. And there is some good news. One square of dark chocolate is proven to boost your mood, which is great long as you're not tempted to finish the pack. Smile more. Smiling is a simple way to change your mood and the mood of everyone around you and it's infectious and it can really help to diffuse those tense moments. It's so important to find time every single day to relax and I'm not talking about just falling asleep in front of the TV. That's not the kind of relaxing I mean. Our next video is actually all going to be about relaxation so make sure you look out for that. Exercising. When you exercise, it starts to kick out the stress hormones from your body and it's great for our mind, soul and body. Now, I'm not suggesting that you take a spin class every day, but make sure that you build a little bit of exercise into your everyday routine. It might be gardening, it could be skipping, jumping on the kids' trampoline, morning stretches or just going for a long walk. Journaling. My final recipe for a good day is journaling. Since the age of 18, I've been journaling every single day. I take 20 minutes to just sit down and process how I feel, reflect on what's happened in my day. Journaling has been proven to have a whole host of psychological benefits. Writing down your feelings is cathartic, whether your day's been good or bad, and it's a safe place to vent or celebrate. Think about it. How often do us mums invest in our own needs? You know, when do we actually allow ourselves the time and space to just truly check out how we feel emotionally? In fact, we're often so busy taking care of everybody else's needs and feelings that we completely neglect our own. 
Years ago, I coined the term selfful to describe unadulterated me time. This involves guilt-free, self-absorbed, dedicated space that I can fill without feeling guilty. I realised long ago that doing activities that make me feel good isn't selfish at all. In fact, it's the glue that holds me together. And we mums, we're the glue that hold our families together. So self-care isn't just important, it is absolutely essential. Where to journal? First things first, think about how you're going to keep a journal. Will it be a pretty notepad or a book or a locked diary or will you keep it digitally on your laptop or on your notes section of your iPhone? It really doesn't matter how or what you use to record your feelings. What matters is committing to a small slice of your day to writing whatever you need to get off your chest. A great way to start your journal is to note daily how you're feeling out of 10. One being really miserable and 10 being fantastic. What's really helpful about this type of scale is that you can reflect on the highs and lows of your emotions and you can also note if that there are any dips and troughs that could be related to your hormones, particular days of the week, exercise or just even knowing what you ate that day. Getting to know your emotional world is a really helpful exercise and can also enable you to begin the process of figuring out what you can do to increase your positive emotion gratitude jars. Something else I do every single day is a gratitude jar. All you have to do is grab a jar, contain a shoebox or whatever you can pop notes in and then at the end of every day write three things that you're grateful for and one thing that you've struggled with but that you feel you've learned from. What's really awesome about this exercise is it helps us to think about all the little things that are simple yet extraordinary in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, whether that's a kind word from a friend or the I love you from one of your kids or even the 10 minutes that you might actually have managed to find where you could drink a whole cup of coffee without having to microwave it five times. These little miracles matter so much in mental health and we often fail to notice them because we're so busy. The truth is that for every negative, that happens to us, we need eight positives to pick ourselves up. So when we actively seek the positives, we automatically combat negative thinking. Of course, it's really important to learn from things that don't go to plan. So turning something that went wrong into a learning experience means that you've taken the sting out of its tail and we call this reframing in therapy and it literally can change your life for the better. Another huge benefit of keeping your journal in gratitude jar is ritual allowing yourself a place where you can be truly mindful. I mean, how often do we spend our lives reacting to everyone and everything else when we are actually just desperate to stop, take a breath and digest how we feel mentally, physically, emotionally and psychologically? The ritual of grabbing a coffee, sitting down with our journal and allowing ourselves to be fully present is a really healthy habit to commit to. So today I want you to start your journal and your gratitude jar. I promise that the only effect these things are going to have on your life will be positive in nature and imagine when you are grey and old looking back on a life fully lived. Remember that however your day is going, channelmum.com village is here for you. It's a safe place to ask questions and get answers from trained parent helpers, all trained by me, plus mums who have been there too. Once you've watched each episode of the course, please do post in the forums to chat about how you're feeling right now and remember you are not alone. We get it and we're here to help you every step of the way.